Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In a recent Twitter thread, somebody posted the top five rockets they thought looked the best and Neutron came in and that got me thinking, Neutron does look pretty good. I mean, it's sort of a bullet shape. It's not perfect, but you know, it does have a certain sort of charm to it, a uh, sort of coolness. Uh, the problem with it is, is it was too small. I say was because I have changed that here in the Realism Overall Sandbox. It just didn't have the capacity for me to do anything useful with it, given the kind of missions that I normally do. So, yes, I have changed it. I have sized up the Neutron rocket by a factor of about 50%, and I have replaced its engines, its Archimedes engines, with, of course, Raptor Sea Level engines. So, we have Raptor Sea Level engines now, and these are configured as Raptor Max. You can see the stats there. Um, 2,256 kilonewtons in vacuum, 358.9 vacuum ISP, and seven of them. And so basically we're, I mean, it's sort of like a starship. It's sort of like a starship. And therefore I also decided to use star stage two, uh, sorry, yes, star stage two medium. So that's star stage two medium there with a single Prometheus vacuum engine. So that's the a uh, vacuum engine from Ariane, uh, I guess we Ariane 7 or Ariane Next or whatever they want to call it. Uh, so yes, the Prometheus vacuum engine, stats on that, uh, fairly heavy, uh, 368 second ISP, I'm probably optimistic there, and 1080 kilonewtons right now I have. And the tank itself is of course recoverable, that's why I'm using Star Stage 2, because it is a recoverable tank. This ring is the decoupler. Uh, I have named this neutron, this uh, supersized neutron, the strangely charming neutron. Oh, we need to get that on the right node. Um, and that is a particle physics reference because a neutron is normally uh, two up and one down quark. Let me just double check that. Um, uh, no, sorry, one up and two down quarks. Uh, the up quark is a positive two thirds charge and the down quarks are negative one charge negative one-third charges each. But it turns, it turns out that quarks, they are bigger quarks. So, uh, so the second generation of quark is called the charm quark and strange quark. And the charm quark also has a plus two-thirds charge and the strange quark has a negative one-third charge. So it's like the up and down quark, but bigger. So I have called this the strangely charming neutron. This is a neutron with the bigger Quarks. There you are. Uh, so there's the strangely charming neutron with a, uh, uh, one charm quark and two strange quarks, whatever. This analogy is getting a little bit too far. But yes, it is sized up just a bit, about starship size. And this is partly brought on by another uh, sort of theory I had about using starship as the first stage of an orbital vehicle, not uh, SSTO at all. but We'll get to that in a different video. So the question is, what kind of payload capacity can we get with this? This is a normal sort of test. And of course, we do need to reserve fuel in Star Stage 2 for its return. It is meant to return. Oh, I forgot something, in fact. Um, uh oh, uh, I forgot the parachutes. We need to, uh, let's actually, since I've already sized everything, make that the root part and take that off. Technically, this can be taken off to the payload adapter, but we are going to keep it on. Let me just get the empty mass of this as a reference. So 13 tons. The engine is sort of sticking out. This was originally meant to have four engines in there, but I don't uh, I don't have an engine right now quite suited for it. I need to develop a little bit of a better engine for this purpose. Uh, yeah. I mean, it'll have to be an engine that doesn't exist because they don't really have. I want uh, basically four 200 kilonewton engines to fit in those slots. Or maybe 150 will do, but there isn't such an engine as far as I know. Unless the landing engines for Lunar Starship on the moon, if they ever give us the stats on those, those could be possible. But uh, they might not be very well. They should be vacuum efficient, but who knows. Okay, so yeah, all sorts of questions. Uh, let's just get these parachutes on. So yes, a seven minute burn time for this upper stage. 
the burn time for the neutron itself is at three minutes if I can get it at the right node. The uh, three minutes. There we go. Uh, three minutes, and then we'll reserve the rest. I think for its return. So closing the fairing, and let's see. Let's not have the parachutes immediately go there. I'm not going to try and land the Neutron yet, that'll be for a later date. Uh, for now we'll keep it like this. I don't know if they need fins at the top, maybe? I forget, I forget about whether it needs fins. Let's just try it like this and see what happens. We are trying for 30 tons. Yeah, it's an interesting sort of thing. Looks sort of mean. We're at Cape Canaveral right now. Okay, throttle up, and ignition, and launch. The dry mass of the body, by the way, is uh, including the engines. The first stage, the dry mass of the first stage is something between 50 and 60 tons right now. That might be a little bit generous. It might need to be more than that. Okay, throttling down. Time to apoapsis seems like it'll be enough for the upper stage. We do need to allow some time for the transition because we have to open the fairing and everything. Okay, so reserving 18 seconds of full throttle burn time there, opening the fairing. We are close enough to in space. Okay, separation. And uh, I guess I better ignite now. Well, we need sort of more robust separation there. Okay. Now let me just see how much delta V we have in here. 2600 is probably not enough. This thing's... Oh, we have an imbalance in methane and oxygen. Hold on, hold on. I had a different fuel mixture for the Archimedes engine versus the, the SpaceX Raptor engines. So yes, let's fix that. Oh, so we have more performance than I was expecting. Well, uh, yeah, we better... Better fix that. We need the performance to land. We can't be carrying all that extra methane, can we? Yeah, there's two different fuel mixtures here. Okay, is that good? Is that too much? It's a bit too much right now. It's too heavy. But we don't need that delta V either. Okay, let's just make it those numbers. Oh, well, that gives us more burn time. I don't really want more burn time. <laughs> um... Yeah, I'd rather have the extra thrust to weight ratio than more burn time. So I'll cut that down even more. Now the maximum volume on this is the actual volume that it can contain, uh, given 86% utilization or something like that. Uh, so we can underdo that. It's just that I can't carry more than what I've configured it to be able to carry. Okay, so yep, that's about where we were. It's just that this time, hopefully, this stage will have more delta V available to it. Okay, one more time. Okay, SAS on, throttle up, ignition, and launch. So really, in a way, this is acting like a competitor to my own Orion 3 space plane. The carrier plane. The carrier plane that you've seen in previous videos. That also can carry Star Stage 2 on top. And so it's a question of do we want a rocket like this, a reusable rocket like this, or do we want the Orion carrier plane, which, uh, you know, inspired by 2001 A Space Odyssey and everything. We have tested that. It's sort of a reliable system. I don't know about landing this, right? This is still new as far as I'm concerned. The Orion carry plane is a tested sort of thing. Well, it might depend partly on the payload capacity, but I expect this to be less... I don't know, but I mean the Orion carry plane has a lot of structural mass. But then this also has to maintain some fuel for the boost back burn and everything. That the Orion carrier plane doesn't have to do. In fact, I took off the jet engines from it too. We didn't even need the jet engines. 
well, though it might be preferable in like a career mode situation. Just for safety's sake. Well, let's see what 18 seconds gets us this time. Okay, 18 seconds and open fairing. And eject and I'll have to start the engine already. Uh, I'm sure they'll have a better ejection system and everything. Okay, and then pop back to see how much delta V. 3,331. I mean, for a for a barge landing, that'd be fine, but it can't possibly cancel out the surface velocity and get back like this. Um, we're gonna have to reserve more fuel, I think. Well, let me just see what what kind of structural mass do I have on this? I mean, yes, I mean, look at that, 136 tons there. The tank is only 41.63 uh, tons, so it's fairly light. I mean, as far as those things go. But reserving like 10% will be fine. It's like 53 tons dry, the first stage. That doesn't seem like too much. It might be too little, as I said before. Okay, well, let's try again and reserve more fuel. Oh, I definitely didn't want an extra. Okay. Okay. Well, yes, ignition and launch. I'm gonna go with 27 seconds. Seems like a lot, but that'll be 15% of the burn time. I'll also go steeper this time. Technically it only has to cancel out the horizontal speed. Canceling out the vertical speed is gonna be done for us, right? Gravity will take care of that part. Okay, we're coming close to the end of the burn. I need to throttle down there. We have gone steeper this time. Well, that's 27 seconds. Let's see. Bearing. Separation, ignition. There it goes. And here, well, we have 4,233, and the surface horizontal speed is 2,292. So, we have to cancel that out and also go back about the same. I'll, I think it's close enough. I'm gonna assert that that's close enough. Getting to orbit, though, is really tight now. <laughs> Um, it's close, but if we want this to deorbit, well, it might be too close. But we'll see what the how much we need, how much extra we need. We've got the parachutes, we've got the heat shield. The heat shield might be well. It's probably yeah, it might be too much because there's just gonna be an empty tank coming down. You know, this is a fairly generous heat shield overall. I'm t mainly talking about the blader mass rather than just the uh, size of it. Of course, the size of it has to be as big as it is, just to cover the tank. So again, this was with 30 tons. Okay, well, we're definitely not in orbit. Uh, we had our vertical speed controlled. We need 400 meters per second minimum, and then to bring this back down, maybe uh, another 150, so... 550 meters per second. Let's see what size we have to make the payload in order to make that happen. But uh, this isn't looking great right now. I mean, we could size it up more and put nine engines on here instead of the seven. I mean, uh, whoops. Uh, Neutron has mounts for seven and I've put seven, but we could have nine. Uh, there's plenty of space down here. Raptor engines are really small, <laughs> right? Because of the high pressure chambers and the stage combustion and everything so yeah high pressure chambers make the engines small and allow you to fit more on the bottom of it uh, so yeah we could we could increase the number of engines but that also increases dry, the dry mass of the stage the first stage and it's gonna need to come back down and everything 
so anyway, uh, taking a look at the upper stage in particular, because the lower stage really can't get too much further out than it's coming uh, already. Uh, we need 500 meters per second more, 550 I said. So we're looking at 5,450. This is not, I mean, of course, we're trying to recover both stages, so it is somewhat ambitious here. Uh, we're looking at about 2,000, uh, sorry, let's try 23 tons. Uh, that's a little bit sad, isn't it? I guess we'll get a little bit more from the first stage. 23 ton, well, hold on, let's reroute to the payload and see what's going on. Uh, boop. How much is it? 23 tons. Alright, well, let's just try it to get a definitive answer on this thing. Now, with the Starship as a first stage idea, I was planning to launch it out of Boca Chica and land it at Cape Canaveral, so there would be no boost back burn. It would continue flying forward and come back down at Cape Canaveral. In that case, it wouldn't have to reserve quite as much fuel, and that was the plus side to that. We could potentially do that with this as well, uh, just, you know, try and make sure it goes all the way across the Gulf of Mexico. I, I don't know if NASA would approve the fact that it's got to be coming back down across Florida. Um, the citizens of Orlando right here might have an issue, but... Uh, yeah, it's tough to find a good pair of sites that would be compatible. It's possible to go up the coast to Wallops. Uh, it's not quite the same distance. That means the less the distance is, the less the first stage can do for us, right? Because if it tries to overextend, it'll need to boost back again. Anyway, ignition. Okay, throttling down. Okay, 27 seconds. Open fairing. And separation, ignition. At low throttle, and then throttle up. Okay, so that's going. And here we have 4,200, same, same sort of deal. So no big difference there as far as the relationship to the delta V we have and the horizontal speed. Okay, it's a little bit tight, but we're wrapping it up here. Okay, that's already enough for me. Okay, and... That's the payload adapter, that's what we want first. Okay, separation. Okay, the payload is off. Actually, we have extra because I forgot uh, we, we were calculating the amount that was necessary to come back down with the payload on it instead of without. So we've got 268, which is plenty. We could probably get a little bit of a higher, um, a lot higher periapsis, round it out a little bit better. Uh, so we can't really see like this what the mass is. Just verify 23 tons, 22.99. And then we get this on... Uh, Suborbital trajectory, I'll just do that right now. So let's just check that everything works. But 23 tons, I don't know. That's maybe not big enough. So we've got some options. We could go the the sort of no boost back thing and go from like, let's say Cape Canaveral to Wallops or something like that. Maybe we could use this as a station resupply thing. Um, or... We could add more engines to the first stage and make the first stage bigger. Uh, well, we had some spare volume available. So if we add some more engines to the first stage instead of just the seven, we could use the spare volume and get more delta V like that. But then that leads the first stage getting further out. So the problem is the second stage being shaped like this, it can't really be any bigger and still fit inside the top of the neutron rocket, right? Uh, we were sort of limited by how big this can be. And of course, um, yeah, we can't use hydrogen and oxygen because that will make this bigger. You would want denser fuels, if anything, but then you get a 
efficiency hit from that. It's amazing how little fuel it takes to give this when it's on its own, the Delta P to deorbit, but... Oh, okay, that's too much. <laughs> Actually, it needed less than I thought, huh? Uh, okay, prograde. Actually, let's go normal, get rid of that payload adapter first. Uh, I guess it's not fully, fully reusable. The payload adapter is is uh, expendable. We do dump that on re-entry. That's the only piece that we dump. So we get the fairings back, but we don't get that payload adapter back. Okay, well that's probably good enough. And it'll be in the dark. Okay, we are going through the re-entry part. Interesting decision by the game of where to put the flame effects. It really likes these little gaps. <laughs> tossing out flames from those like there are engines that are burning. But that actually has nothing to do with the thermodynamics. So yeah, overall I'm underwhelmed by the potential of this. Granted, you know, both stages are reusable, so there's a plus side and it certainly gives a performance boost. We're only scaling the body up by about 50%, though that is a rather large rocket physically um, because of the way it tapers. And yeah, I mean, so, so it's not the hugest scale up, it's doable with, you know, reasonable tank technology, you know. But, again, we have some opportunities to improve this. I don't know if it's something... I'll have to decide whether it's something I'm interested in improving. Or maybe we'll, we'll take a look at the Starship version and see how that goes. Alright. Well, 6 meters per second as advertised. So, as this is safely under parachute, I will say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.